This is NDTV. And you're watching Classics. India Inc. this week comes to you from Pune, from where we have come to tell you the story of Thermax. Thermax began life as a small company making small boilers, but is today one of India's most modern companies in the real sense of modernity, in the sense in which industry can exist in friendliness with the environment by embracing environmentally friendly production and energy saving. Sort of the early avatar was National Steel, a small company started by my father in Vadala. Uh, he started his life in Godrej, then left it, did some import export, and then with a partner started National Steel, where they made sterilizers and fowler beds. Huh. And uh, they realized that they were at the mercy of government because most hospitals in those days were with government and getting money from them was difficult and they wanted to diversify and at that stage my husband had joined the company not as my husband but in his own right on merit uh, so my father and my uh, husband who later became my husband started once in India in collaboration with a company in Belgium to make boilers industrial boilers for uh, India and, and what are the different uses of these boilers? Uh, well, you could uh, use it in different industries, like you could use it for generating steam uh, in textiles where you need steam. Uh, and my, uh, it we had this collaboration and 10 years down the line, we were making better boilers than our collaborators and they hadn't put any provision in the uh, sort of agreement that we can't compete against them, not realizing we would one day. So since we were competing against them in Europe in a small way, they requested us to change the name. And that's how it became Thermax. That's how it became Thermax. Thermax. If I asked you to define the Thermax culture, what would you say? Quality? What would you, how would you describe it? I would like to believe it's quality, but no, I can't honestly say that uh, quality is innovation. I think, uh, especially in the earlier years. I think we all love innovation, but unless we have reasonable tolerance towards free, uh, mistakes, innovation, I mean, out of every 10 things, maybe seven won't work. So I think tolerance for mistakes. Uh, open culture, though we do have hierarchy, Everything is not based on hierarchy. I mean, anyone can walk into anyone's room. We have a wonderful uh, forum called Open Forum in Institute where once a year we meet all our employees in all the locations, major more locations, not abroad in India, and including workers, and they can ask us any question under the sun. Rohinton Aga was the man who took Thermax to new heights in his tragically short lifetime and remains the inspiration for his wife and daughter. He was an unusual person. For one thing, he was an intellect. Uh, he loved uh, reading and he would have loved to be a professor except that he had to look after his parents and his father was blind. And he, was a, he came from a middle class family. So as a professor, he wouldn't be able to support them. So it pushed him into the business world. He first started his career with Burma Shell, then moved to Duncan's, and then came, with her, came to us. Uh, he genuinely believed in freedom. Uh, he, my father talked about it, but had mixed messages towards me. He would ask me to sort of toe the line, not differ from him in public. Whereas my husband made me feel I'm an individual in my own right. And he wanted a companion who could disagree with him, who could do things well. And he never encouraged me to read or sewing, none of it. He hated it. He says, use your time more productively, read, 
do social work, do anything, but don't do all these things which someone else can do it. My father was a visionary. My father was a child at heart. Um, constantly, he was not an engineer by profession. Uh, he was an economist. But he always had that, uh, that childlike instinct to gain knowledge, to learn something new. Uh, he read a lot. And I guess with a man who's, uh, who's really open to listening, to hearing different people's ideas, to building on people's strengths, to empowering his entire team. Um, if somebody came up with a uh, suggestion that this is something, why don't we look at this, Mr. Aga? He'd say, he'd say, why don't you go ahead and find out more about it, come back. And after that, he would say, would you like to run it and make a business of it? So, you know, he would be constantly challenging, motivating. So he would probably collect a lot of ideas from others and then give it a, a, a sort of pave away for it. Businessmen in earlier times were reluctant to express views on matters of policy for fear of offending our socialist leaders, but Rohinthan Aga openly advocated liberalization of India's closed, controlled economy. He felt that we need competition, and I remember when Manmohan, uh, in 92 was it, declared liberalization, he jumped with joy. And then people said competition might come, and what will happen? And he said, we may die if we can't survive, but that doesn't matter, it's good for the country. And he was jubilant.